94.3 The Dude is very grateful to our men and women in uniform. We're proud to recognize local members of our military by turning the spotlight on them right now in our soldier salute. I'm your host, Sergeant First Class Retired Don Sorensen, and on today's Soldier Salute, we're speaking with Brigadier General Milford Beagle, Jr., the Commanding General of Fort Jackson. General Beagle, tell me about yourself. I kind of go in this order. I tell folks I'm a, I'm a son, I'm a soldier, I'm a spouse, and I'm a father. Both sons, uh, or I've got a second lieutenant that's in the Army, and then I've got a younger son that'll go to South Carolina State, ironically here, uh, in a couple of weeks, and then, you know, I've got a, a younger sister, and then spouse, been married to her for 27 years and been a soldier for 28. Born and raised in a small town in the upstate of South Carolina, a little town called Ennery. Most folks get that confused with Ellery, but it's distinctly different. And, you know, high school there, played for a great, you know, legendary coach in the upstate, football, uh, a lot of sports, uh, did sports at South Carolina State. And, you know, just going across the globe in terms of, you know, where I've been assigned. The most recent one, I've been at 10th Mountain, so coming, you know, back home to South Carolina, you go from both ends of the spectrum to minus 20 below to you know, 100 degrees and 100% humidity, which has been, you know, very awesome. But again, it's great to be back home. General Beagle, way back when you were a young cadet at South Carolina State University, from what I've read, you didn't even really have plans to make the military a future. I imagine that being the commanding general of Fort Jackson one day was the furthest thing from your mind. It was absolutely the furthest thing from my mind. And given the amount of time that we spent as cadets, you know, at Fort Jackson, you know, you, you never thought about ever running, you know, installation of that size, commanding that many troops. And it was, for a lot of us, going to be four years and out. You know, it was kind of the, the, the thing that we kind of all agreed to. You know, we'll, we'll do this for a short stint, and then we'll get out. But, you know, 28 years later, you find yourself back in a position that you never saw yourself or imagined yourself being in that position. General Beagle, many of our listeners, even though they're from the state of South Carolina, don't realize how prestigious the ROTC program at South Carolina State really is. How proud are you to be a member of that organization? I'm extremely proud. I I get kind of goosebumps when when you ask me that question because it's just a program that is so prestigious. And, you know, we we kind of south or just, you know, locally, you know, around Orangeburg, we kind of call it the West Point of the South because we're only, you know, second to West Point in terms of general officers. Now, when you talk scale, you know, West Point produces a large amount of general officers, but from one ROTC program, South Carolina State leads leads the pack. So we're at 21 right now. I'm the 21st. Uh, probably going to be some more coming down the road, I'm pretty sure, just based on the program and just how great that program is, uh, is phenomenal. And, you know, we produce uh, the most minority officers out of South Carolina State, and that exceeds what West Point does. So there, there is a lot that is right here in our backyard in our own state uh, that is the equivalent of our United States Military Academy, which is just awesome, and that's all right here in South Carolina. General Beagle, I've had several guests on the show already that have a history with 10th Mountain. That is such an elite unit. Every one of them have just been extremely proud of the time that they've spent there. Could you tell me a little bit about your time with 10th Mountain? Yeah, I, I'm extremely proud of my time at 10th Mountain. I mean, that's, you know, one of the combat patches that I wear because having served, you know, in combat with 10th Mountain is, you know, extremely rewarding. And to just to be a part of that organization, which is our Army's most deployed division. And a lot of people don't know that. They, they talk about the extreme temperatures, and it, it does get extremely cold, but that's just the conditions that you operate in there. But I think, you know, beyond just some of the other stories that, that I could tell you about 10th Mountain, the majority of those stories, you know, for me, link back to Fort Jackson. So having commanded a brigade, at, you know, here at Fort Jackson, I go to Fort Drum a couple of years later, and there would be always at least, you know, two or three soldiers that would come up and go, hey, sir, were you at Fort Jackson? I'm like, yes, I was. I think you were my brigade commander. And I'm like, find out what unit and I'm like well yes I was and at one particular day I mean I had five soldiers standing around me that were soldiers that had trained here at Fort Jackson that were up at drum so it doesn't get any better than that when you can kind of see the loop close in terms of what we produce here and then where that goes across our army and right at Fort Drum there are numerous soldiers that had trained right here at Fort Jackson. General Beagle, many of our listeners are current and former military, and a lot of us were, you know, retired as NCOs. Some of us got out and never even, you know, reached that level. But we always heard throughout our careers, you don't see the big picture. I imagine, you know, being part of 10th Mountain and now the commanding general of Fort Jackson, that you've had to be part of a lot of those decisions. Could you just give us an idea of what it's like to make the big picture decision? 
Yeah, Don. So I, I had a former boss tell me at the strategic level, you got to do the best you can at making the complex simple. And so when it comes to those big picture decisions, it boils down to a very simple concept. And it's you have to make you know resources align with requirements. And they never do. And so what that means is now you have risk. And it's all about the decisions are all related to risk. And so do you lower the level of risk? How do you mitigate certain risk? And that's going to be, you know, risk to your mission, risk to your people, you know, and, and the impacts. And so that's what it boils down to at the end of the day is really the decisions I make to mitigate risk, balance risk, or go a completely different option is what you want to do with those big picture decisions. General Beagle, Fort Jackson is a huge part of the community. A lot of our listeners probably remember a time when the gates were kind of open. Anyone that wanted to could go into Fort Jackson, and there wasn't really a whole lot of mystery. I remember being in uniform, and people would be like, hey, what's going on over there at Fort Jackson? It's like nobody knows anymore. But we've got the Come Meet Your Army Tour coming up in September. How is that going to impact our community? Well, the one thing we... We want the public to come see, you know, their army because it's the public's army. You know, come come meet your army, come see your army. And it shouldn't be a mystery in terms of what we do because it's, it's the American public's army and, and that's who we serve. And so on 20 September, you know, will be one, one of our first and we do it quarterly. As many folks as we can get to come out, you know, we want them to come out. Security con- conditions change over time, especially since 9-11. So you'll see that across the board at many posts. But again, it, it should not be a mystery, especially when... You have an installation, you know, in your state, in your backyard, that's yours. And that's what I tell folks. It's not my post. I'm the commander, but it's America's post. And you got to come see it. The phenomenal things that we do, and especially here in South Carolina, you know, we are the Army's pipeline. So over 60% of the females that enter the Army come through Fort Jackson. Over 50% of the males come through Fort Jackson. And I had a senior leader tell me at the four-star level, he said, remember this, the Army goes however Fort Jackson goes. So if we stop doing what we did, army stops it comes to a grinding halt and that's right here in south carolina so i want everybody to know that not just in columbia and the midlands but in the upstate where i grew up in the low state where i went to school uh, because we have something special something more unique than any other post you know across this country if any of our listeners are interested in finding out more about this they can reach out to varan hill and her phone number is 803-751-1474 and I would also imagine that you can find out a lot about what's coming down the pipeline just by going there on Facebook. General Beagle, it's hard to think about Columbia, South Carolina, and not think about Fort Jackson. Matter of fact, just about everywhere I ever went during my military duties, one of the first things other soldiers mentioned was Fort Jackson. So many of them had come through here for training themselves. With Fort Jackson being such a large part of the community, how do you envision your leadership will shape the future of Fort Jackson? Well, Don, not being able to lay out everything now, because you think about where I am in time and space, roughly 45 days you know, into the job, 90 days, you really get a good feel of, you know, after all the assessments, kind of seeing things, you know, touching all the folks you need to touch, seeing all the organizations you need to see. But the thing that I'm going to do come, you know, to October is a media roundtable. And by that point, that's 100 days in, kind of lay everything out, those long-term plans, those views. But in a you know short you know synopsis, what I'll say and what I've been saying is, you know, we want to, you know, train today. That's what we do. And we've got to do that better than, than anybody else, to include our enemies. We always have to be a step ahead of them and remain relevant for tomorrow. Because again, if you don't like change, you're going to like irrelevance less. So we're going to continue to change, you know, with the times, with the threat, you name it. And that's, you know, where we're going in terms of you know, the big focus in my view is long term. Like you said, it's not about, you know, me and my two years here, hopefully a little bit more if I can squeeze it out. But, you know, it's about the long term. And then how do I set the conditions for that? And for the next commander, the next group of soldiers that come in is what I want to do. But to, you know, neck it down to, you know, goals, objectives, those type things, plan to have a lock on that by 2 October and then lay that out to the media where they can see our contributions to Fort Jackson and the Midlands in Columbia. Thanks for joining us in our Soldier Salute, presented by Little Pig's Barbecue. Serving Columbia since 1963 with that bodacious buffet. By Lexington Guns and Shooting Range. Veteran owned and operated. And by Carolina Honda Powerhouse. Motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides with discounts for all military personnel. And Dominion Energy. We depend on...